Good day to all of you. Our topic for today is all about capital budgeting. But we will focus more on the capital budgeting techniques. But before we uh, dive into it, let us now uh, first discuss the overview of the capital budgeting concept. Managers in all organizations periodically face major decisions that involve cash flows over several years. These decisions involve the acquisition of some machineries, vehicles, buildings, or land, which are examples of such decisions. So we have also other uh, examples that include decisions that involve significant changes in a production process or may mga iba that adds a major new line products or services to the organization's activities. Therefore, the uh, decisions uh, that involves cash inflows and outflows beyond the current year are called capital budgeting decisions. Now, uh, knowing those the uh, decisions uh, faced by the managers in all organizations, we can say that capital budgeting is the process of identifying and evaluating planning and financial capital investment projects. So in every capital projects or investment projects, it does not only show that they need to acquire the materials, but they first evaluate it as to the benefits uh, that relates to cash inflows and outflows of a certain decision. In addition in, uh, to capital budgeting, the primary objective of financial managers is to utilize the funds of the company within the limits of their authority so that in the long run, the company receives at least the higher rate of return on its investment as might be obtained. As for the secondary objective, it is to maximize the present value of the investment to obtain the highest return possible without assuming undue risk. Also, to maximize the earning power of the company, resources are allocated in such a way that the earning power will be converted into as high a rate of returns as possible for the company. So to accomplish the, these objectives, measures are needed to evaluate the company's performance. Uh, hearing all of those, we could really uh, conclude that hindi lang sila basta-basta uh, nagde-decide whether to acquire it or not. Okay, but uh, then uh, they also um, provide um, outsourcing, um, gathering of data as to the present values of the inflows and outflows and then measuring the net effect of it in which is uh, in identifying which is beneficial. So, when we add, when they identify which is beneficial, they always look at to the uh, higher cash inflows than the outflows of the company. Next is the capital budgeting techniques. This is just part of the capital budgeting lesson. So in this particular uh, video tutorial, we will just focus more on the capital budgeting, budgeting techniques both the discounting methods and the non-discounting methods. Now, capital investments are evaluated based on their liquidity and profitability power. Net cash inflow is used to measure liquidity, while profit is used to measure the profitability. So we already know the concept of liquidity and profitability under the topic financial statement analysis. So generally, the more liquid the proposed project, the better. The higher the profitability, the better the investment is. The acceptability of the project may be measured in the terms of rate of return on investment, length of time to recover the investment, or the amount of recovery. So in here, the more na mas mabilis siyang ma-recover yung cost, much better kasi mas madali mong mabawi yung investment mo. The higher the profitability the rate, the higher also uh, that it is uh, beneficial to the company. So, when evaluating proposed projects, may or may not also consider the time value of money. Kaya naman, in here, we will encounter different techniques that uh, 
consider time value of money, and we also have techniques as to capital budgeting that did not consider time value. So when we say time value, it considers the present value of the cash inflows and outflows. Hence, the capital budgeting techniques are also classified as traditional models and discounting models. So ito yung uh, other terms niya as to the dis uh, as to uh, consideration of the time value. So before discussing the capital budgeting technique, it is also important to understand the concept of the time value of money. So, when we say time of value of money, as I said a while ago, it considers present value. So, um, when defining capital projects, cash outflows and inflows, which is important, it is also important to consider when those cash inflows occur. When, ha? Huh? Okay. So, for example, if someone offered you a 100,000 today or 100,000 a year from now, that could save toward the furniture retirement which alternative you would choose so most likely you would choose to receive 100,000 today because you could invest it and have more than 100,000 a year from now so yan yung pinaka mas magandang decision na maiisip mo this simple example illustrate an important capital budget concept known as the time value of money so, the time value of money recognizes that a peso today is worth more than a peso a year from now if for no other reason than you could put the peso in a bank today and have more than a peso a year from now. So, because of the time value of money, capital investments that promise earlier cash flows are preferable to those that promise later cash flows. So, I think that's clear. So, let us now proceed to the different capital budgeting techniques. First is the traditional models. These traditional models do not consider the time value of money. So we have payback method. When we say payback method, it this focuses on the payback period. So the payback period is the length of time that it takes for a project to recover its initial cost from the net cash inflows that it generates. The basic premise of the payback method is that the more quickly the cost of an investment can be recovered, the more desirable the investment is. So this is uh, done using this formula. So we have payback period, net initial investment over the annual net cash inflow. So the annual net cash inflow here is the net cash inflows or savings after deducting the corresponding income taxes for solving purposes. There is no adjustment in the payback method for the time value of money. A cash inflow in year 5 uh, is treated the same as cash inflow in year 1 since we do not consider time value here. Okay, so now uh, for short, when we say payback method, it talks more on um, ilang years ba natin mare-recover or mababaw yung cost of investment na binigay natin or in-invest for that particular type of investment or halimbawa machineries if ever so the lesser years that it could take to recover mas better kasi nga it means that mas maraming cash inflows ang na generate out from using that equipment or machineries aside from payback method we have also payback reciprocal so it represents the rate of cash returns provided by an investment in a given year so, to solve for the payback reciprocal, we have 1 divided by the payback period. The payback period was already discussed on later slides. So, we already know how to get that. Now, let us try to uh, solve this illustration. NGL company needs a new milling machine. The company is considering two uh, machines, machine A and machine B. Machine A cost 150000 and has a useful life of 10 years and will reduce operating costs by 50,000 per year. So, what about the machine B? It costs only 120,000 which is lesser than the machine A. So, it will also reduce operating costs by 50,000 pesos per year. But as a useful life, it only have 5 years. Which, is ma uh, which machine should be purchased according to the payback method? So, when we say payback method, Net initial investment over the annual net 
cash inflow. Now, for machine A, the investment or the cost of uh, machine A is 150 over the annual net cash inflow, which was given to reduce operating cost by 50,000. So, therefore, machine A could be recovered in a span of 3 years. What about for machine B? Machine B cost only 120,000 and the annual cash inflow is also 50,000. Therefore, um, the years uh, that should be needed to recover the cost of the machine B is 2.4 years. So in here, we could really identify na yung machine B yung mas faster na ma-recover yung initial cost of investment. So, if we will be the management or if you are the managerial accountant, you could suggest that we will uh, choose the better or the fastest uh, way or year or span of time to recover the item. Before we proceed to this slide, let me just reiterate to you that the payback method is not a true measure of profitability of an investment, although it could be uh, used as basis, but it is not the true measure. Rather, it simply tells a manager how many years are required to recover the original investment. Pero yun naman talaga ang uh, purpose ng me uh, payback method. Unfortunately, a shorter payback period does not always mean that one investment is more desirable. Kasi nga, di ba? Uh, the shorter, the better daw. But, it is not, Okay always desirable. Refer to the illustration uh, that was shown a while ago. When machine B has a shorter payback period because uh, its useful life is only 5 years rather than 10 years for machine A. Diba? Uh, so machine B would have to be purchased twice. Once, immediately, and then again after the fifth year to provide the same service as just one machine A. So, under these circumstances, machine A would probably be better investment than machine B. Even though the machine B has a shorter payback period, but unfortunately, the payback method ignores all the cash flows that could occur after the payback period. So, as we can see kanina sa... Um, Illustration natin, 2.4 years yung machine B na mare-recover. But we have also to consider the life of their equipment. So kung pipiliin natin si machine B kasi doon kanina, um, which is uh, useful only for 5 years, it needs to a uh, double purchase of machine B. ba? Para lang... Uh, makaabot ng 10 years. While, if we are going to use machine A, although mare-recover siya ng 3 years, but, okay, the useful life is 10 years. That is why, ang mas preferable doon, okay, is machine A. But, if we are going to, um, to follow the formula and the decision rule of payback method, the shorter the better. So, si machine B talaga ang mapipili natin. Kaya, it, uh, it only explains that payback method is not a true measure of profitability. Okay, so let us now uh, proceed to the payback period. So, number of years up to the year which the investment is paid off plus unrecovered investment at the beginning of the year in which the investment is paid off divided by cash inflow in the period in which the investment is paid off. So, that's the payback period. Now, let's consider this illustration. For ABC company, we have years 1, 2, 3, and 4. The investment, which is the cost of the item or the material or the equipment, 124,000 pesos. We have the cash inflow which is the benefits that could be derived out from investing 124,000. We have 40, 80, 40, and 20 on the respective years. So, for you to get the payback period, ayan. So, the initial uh, investment on that 
particular year of acquisition is 124. So, the unrecovered investment, hindi pa naman tayo nagka-inflow So, 124 pa din. On year 1, nagka-inflow na tayo ng 40. Therefore, mababawasan yung unrecovered investment natin into 84,000. Another, during year 2, nagkaroon na naman tayo ng inflow by 80,000 which means that our unrecovered investment is only 4,000 on the second year. Nung third year, 40,000 yung inflow, therefore, naging zero na yung unrecovered investment natin. Therefore, according to the table, it will took us two uh, point something years for us to recover the uh, investment which is 124,000. So, if hindi naman nyo gusto yung table, mayroon naman ano, uh, formula to get that. Okay? So, 2 years, hindi natin alam kung ano yung uh, particularly ilang months ba after 2 years. So, we have this one. 4 milyo, uh, 4,000 na lang yung naiwang unrecovered, ilan ba yung cash inflow natin on the 3rd year? 40,000. So, we have 4,000 over 40. The answer here is 2.1 years. Okay? So, 2 years time plus 0.1 is equals to 2.1 years. Therefore, when you are going to invest 124,000, it could be recovered in a span of 2.1 years only. The type of technique is accounting rate of return or ARR. This method is also often referred to as the simple rate of return or the unadjusted rate of return. Like the payback period or method, the accounting rate of return method is simple way of screening investment proposal. So, screening. Some managers use this method because they believe it parallels financial statements. So, naka-align siya doon. Which are also based on accrual accounting. However, the accounting rate of return method also does not consider the time value of money. So, wala tayong present value here. To obtain the simple rate of return, the annual incremental, incremental which is the increase ha, of net operating income generated by a project is divided by the initial investment in the project which as shown below. Annual net income which is net of tax, ayun, over the average or the initial investment. So the annual incremental net income Included in the numerator should be reduced by the depreciation. Okay, so, kailangan natin tandaan yan. Less pa natin yung depreciation. Charges that result from making the investment and as, a, as well as the income taxes. Kasi sabi dito, it will be computed net of tax. Furthermore, the initial investment shown in the denominator should be reduced by any salvage value. Okay, or... Um, Scrap value from the sale of old equipment. Let's try this one as an illustration. Infinite T Incorporated is a processor of low acid T. The company is contemplating purchasing equipment for an additional processing line that would increase revenues by 180,000 per year. Incremental cash operating expenses would be 80,000 per year. The equipment would cost 360000 and have a 9-year life with no salvage value. So, wala siyang salvage value. The income tax rate is 30%. Now, let us measure the annual incremental revenues. So, it uh, the problem says that it would increase revenues by 180. So, dyan tayo start. Ano pa? Hanapin natin yung annual incremental cash operating expenses. Okay? Mga disbursements natin. Which is by how much? 80,000. Aside from that, sabi ng ano natin, decision rule, ililess muna natin yung depreciation. So, magkano ba yung equipment? It cost 360. Wala namang salvage value. So, wala tayong ililess. Divided by the life. Ilan ba yung life niya? 9 years. So, 360 divides 9. That's 40,000 every year. Okay? Of the depreciation. So, 80 plus 40. That is the annual incremental expenses. Okay? 180 minus 120. That is your taxable income. Ililess lang natin by 30%. Kasi nga, binigay naman dyan that the formula must be net of tax before natin makuha yung si ARR. Therefore, the net income after tax is 42,000 pesos. Now, we have to divide this to the cost of the 
asset or the equipment, which is by how much? 360. So 42 divided by 360,000 is equal to 11.67%. That's how you solve accounting rate of return. Uh, we were just solving the incremental revenues. I -de deduct lang natin sa incremental expenses. When we say incremental, increase. Okay? So, magsasolve lang tayo ng taxable income. La kukuna natin ng uh, income tax, which is 30%. So, yun yung gagamitin natin to divide it to the cost of the equipment. And the result of ARR here is 11.67%. Let us now proceed to the discounted model. So, kanina hindi tayo nag, uh, gumamit ng... Uh, time value of money in solving the results. Now, in this item, we are going to consider the time value of money. We have first discounted payback method. Now, the discounted payback method or period is similar to the regular payback period except that the expected cash flows are discounted. Yun lang naman ang pinagkaiba ng dalawa. By the project's cost of capital or the required rate of return. So, the amount of investment is divided by the discounted net cash inflows. So, the project's cost of capital reflects the return required by the firm's investors, which in turn, it reflects also the risksness of the project being evaluated. The higher the risk of the project, the higher the rate of return it required. So, thus, the discounted payback period refers to the number of years required to recover the investment from discounted cash flows. Now, we have here an illustration. Assume that the following proposals were available to ABC. So, the cost of the investment for project A and B is 5 million. However, in every project, we have different cash inflows. Okay, year 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, we are going to compute the discounted payback period for each proposed project using the cost of capital of 16%. So, we will be considering the 16% the present value natin doon sa net cash inflows per year. To solve for this one, we have a the following solution. So, good thing binigay naman yung present value factor which is 16%. Pero, kailangan nating mag-solve ng present value factor of this uh, every year, okay? So, at a 16% discounted cost of capital. Now, uh, we will be having a separate video tutorial if needed for the present value factor. But in this uh, video, binigay na siya. So, itong iba-iba uh, tayo ng uh, present value factor every year. Okay, so yan, nakalagay naman dyan. So, 0 0.862, 0 0.743, 0 0.641, 0 0.552. Ito siya, na mga present value factors, multiply natin ito sa kada net cash inflows per project. So, if we're going to multiply this 0 0.862 times 2 million, Times 3.5, the answer here is 1,724,000 for A and 3,017,000 for B. So, itong column for to date, ito yung cumulative total of your net cash inflows, okay, which is naka-present value. On year 2, we have 1,486,000 for A, 1,857,000 for B, 500. So, i-cumulative lang natin to from the previous balance ng Project A. So, 1,724,000 A, ipa-plus lang natin yung 1,486,000. So, nakakumulative lang yung total niya. Okay? For Project B, we have 4,874,500. Now, on year 3, ayun, it, uh, from the 3,210,000 na balance ng Project A, nag-add tayo ng 1,282,000, kaya siya naging 4,492,000. Okay? Same goes with the project B. Hanggang sa year 4, ang cumulative niya for A is 5,596,000 and 6,112,000 for project B. Now, paano natin makukuha yung years uh, needed to get your uh, project uh, to recover? Diba, ang cost ng kada project is 5 million. So, ilang year ba makukuha yung uh, 
the cost or marirecover yung cost ng project A. So, sa 5 million, meron tayong pinaka-close year 3, 4,492,000. Okay, so sa 4,492,000, kulang pa yan. So, kailangan pa natin, uh, so pwede pa siyang uh, kumuha doon ng cash inflow sa year 4. Kaya, magle-less din tayo ng 1,104,000. Okay, yan yung mag pinaka base natin. Kaya, nakuha yung 3.46 years. Okay? Kung magkano yung difference ng 5 million less 4,492,000, i-divide lang natin doon sa cash uh, outflow ng year 4, 1,104,600. Kaya, nakuha natin yung 0.46 na decimal. Therefore, Project A could be recovered for 3.46 years. Now, on Project B, 5 million, makukuha natin agad sa year, year 2, year 2 pa lang, project B, 2 years, pero may sobra pa, ba kulang pa, hindi pa siya kompleto 5 million, so therefore, kukuha tayo ng cash inflow sa year 3, magkano ba yung year 3? 961,500, so kung magkano yung difference ng 5 million, minus 4874500 i-divide natin yon sa cash inflow ng year 3 for project B which is 961500 so therefore 2 years and 13 2.13 years natin makukuha yung project B so in this uh, requirement or this uh, illustration much better now we are going to consider project B kasi mas madali siya or mas mabilis ma-recover yung cost of investment for a span only of 2.13 years. The next one is the net present value method. Madali lang naman itong net present value method. So, this method compares the present value of projects cash inflows to the present value of the cash outflows. The difference between the present value of cash flows is called the net present value, which determines whether or not a project is acceptable investment. Now, when performing net present value analysis, managers usually make two important assumptions. First, they assume that all cash flows other than the initial investment occur at the end of periods. And this assumption is somewhat unrealistic bucket, because the cash flows typically occur throughout a period rather than just at its end. Okay, so however, it simplifies the computations considerably. Second, managers assume that all cash flows generated by an investment project are immediately reinvested at a rate of return equal to the rate used to discount the future cash flows, also known as the discount rate. If this condition is not met, the net present value computation will not be accurate. So, simple lang siya, pero meron na siyang disadvantage as to the interpretation. Now, for us to solve... A net present value, let us have this illustration. Hisoka Company is contemplating buying a new machine that will cost him uh, 50000 for the last 5 years. The new machine will enable the company to reduce its labor cost by 18000 per year. At the end of the 5-year period, the company will sell the machine for its salvage value of 5,000 pesos. So, may salvage value siyang binigay. Hisoka Company requires a minimum pre-tax return of 18% on all investment projects. Now, the question, should the machine be purchased? For us to uh, know, okay, so kailangan nating isolve yung present value of the cash inflows over the present value of the cat of the cost of investment the higher the cash inflows much better kasi positive ang net present value but kapag highest pa ang cost kaysa sa benefit or inflows na makukuha natin hindi yun favorable sa company now his oka company must determine whether cash investment of now uh, of 50,000 pesos can be justified if it will result in an 18,000 cost reduction in each of the five uh, next five years. So, every year kasi 18,000. In the next five years, for 18,000, that is ano, uh, 90,000 pesos. Okay. However, the company can earn 18% return by investing its money elsewhere. 
So it is not enough that the annual cost reduction cover just the original cost of the machine. They also yield a return of at least 18% or the company would be either of investing the money elsewhere. To determine whether the investment is desirable, the stream of annual 18,000 cost savings and the machine's salvage value of 5,000 should be discounted to their present values compared to the cost of new machines. So here, binigay na naman yung present value factor. And again, we will be having a separate video tutorial for this. So the annual cash flows is 18,000 every year. Multiply by the present value of annuity, 18% for 5 periods. So that's 3.127. Nakarounded off na po yan. So if we're going to multiply that, that's 56.286. Right? What about the present value of cash inflows? Okay. Ayan. Annual kasi yung kanina. The salvage value. Okay? So multiply by the present value factor of single payment. At 18% for 5 periods. So, that's 0 0.437. Again, binigay na ang present value factor. Imumultiply na lang natin siya doon sa salvage value, which is how much? 2,185. Therefore, the total present value of all cash inflows, 58,471. Now, magkano ba ang machine natin? 50,000 pesos. Therefore, positive siya. Kasi, Mas mataas yung inflows kaysa sa outflows ng 8,471. So, we could say that this machine should be purchased kasi mas mataas yung cash inflows kaysa sa cash outflows. For our final discounted techniques methods, we have profitability index. The net present value of one project cannot be directly compared to the net present value of another project unless the initial investments are equal. Now, one criterion that managers sometimes apply in ranking investment proposal is called profitability index. In the ranking process, the project that has the highest index has the highest priority. Yan yung magiging decision rule natin. Okay, so this will be solved by present value of cash inflows over the initial investment. So in theory, all projects with positive net present values should be accepted. However, companies are infrequently able to adopt all positive net present value proposals because proposals are often mutually exclusive. Now to solve... We have the following. Cyril Department Store has the following investment opportunities. Proposal 1, it's often a gift shop, a Smallville's convention center. Cyril's management believes that the benefits of this proposal would last only 6 years. Cyril's management expects that after 6 years, the firm's competitors will move into the convention center and eliminate Cyril's current advantageous position. However, on the Proposal 2, Open a small gift shop at Smallville Airport, and the airport gift concession would belong to Cyril Department Store for 10 years under a contract of the city. Now, the predicted cash flows of this investment proposal are as follows. Proposal 1, may cash outflow tayo, year 0, years 1 to 6, 7 to 10. Okay, we have cash inflows after tax. Ayan, may mga present value of inflows tayo, the net present value, and the IRR. Now, for us to compute the profitability index, these are completed as follows. Your proposal 1, 60,970. Uh, 60, Saan yan nakuha? Doon sa proposal 1, a present value of inflows at 10%. Divided by... 54,450. That is the cash outflow. Therefore, the profitability index is 1.12. Now, for the second proposal, 110, 610. That is the present value of inflows at 10% for proposal number 2. And then divide natin lang siya sa cash outflow. 101,700. Therefore, the profitability index or PI is 1.09. So, yun lang, never mind the NPV and the IRR. Doon lang tayo sa profitability index. Although, Proposal 1 has the lower NPV than Proposal 2, Proposal 1 exhibits higher profitability index with 
diba? as compared to 1.09. Therefore, Proposal 1 has a higher profitability index due to its considerably lower in initial investment than that required for Proposal number 2. And that's all the capital budgeting techniques for capital budgeting.